simulation standard format where people would sometimes try to board in planeswalkers against control decks because planeswalkers are ostensibly good against control decks. Mm -hmm. But the Sphinx's Revelation deck was so favored in a late game, uh, even if you had a planeswalker, the opposing player had a planeswalker, that just taking a turn off to not really put pressure on them was a bad strategy. I'm feeling the same way about Esper with a lot of these planeswalkers. The planeswalkers that advance your board is one thing. The planeswalkers that are like, and now I have my own draw engine, is not the way that I want to approach this matchup. Because, as we saw there, uh, when Esper gets going, the planeswalkers, the card drawing spells, the, the, the creatures that are worth multiple cards, uh, it, it feels like when someone taps out early on in the game for a planeswalker that's just going to draw a couple of cards when it's coming out of a beatdown deck, the Esper deck is happier playing against that than they are a creature that attacks them. I agree with that. Now, tell, oh, I agree with most of that. There is one card I'm thinking of that I think kind of breaks that rule, but we'll get to that right after this, which is pre-ordering War of the Spark, which you can do today. Actually, you can yeah. order it. Never mind. Yeah, it's, it's a reorder. It's the, a reorder. Before it was a pre-order, you did that, I assume. Now you can order again today. You what know, sleeves, deck boxes, supplies, sealed product, play mats, everything over at go.crcgames.com slash war. The one card that we that I have not seen this weekend, I don't think really we have seen this weekend, that I think kind of breaks that rule, is Nickel Bulls. Yeah, yeah. Because that kills Planeswalkers, its draw engine like makes also affects them. Attacks their hand. It attacks their hand yeah. over the battlefield. Like yeah. that's the kind of card where I know it's difficult to build with because of the restricting casting cost, but you know, that's the thing where you know that that's the kind of card that can go toe to toe with these Teferis. And I think these Grixis decks, if there is a Grixis deck, it's all tap out all the time. You know, I don't want to see any negates in that deck. It's like Fire Duress at you, FIFA Sanity you, Nickel Bolus, the 4-4 Flyer, Nickel Bolus, Planeswalker, like, just punch you in the mouth with a bunch of powerful cards. So Langston here has kept, uh, I believe, he, he uh, considered a mulligan, and has kept five lands, Legion War Boss, Vivian Reed. Strikes me as a little optimistic. Uh, I mean, that's right on the line, I think. I, I, I think keeping that hand's... Totally reasonable. What if your first two draw steps are land like you're playing Magic Online? <laughs> Where if you keep five lands, two spells, you obviously draw two two lands right away. It's yeah. a known bug. <laughs> it's a known bug they refuse to fix. <laughs> yeah, they dusted you off, man. For ten years it's been that way. And everyone who plays Magic Online religiously is shaking their head. They know I'm right. This game is over again. Well, this Vivian read is going to not be good. Yeah. you got to wait <laughs> until that happens. Hold on. Oath of Kaya taking care of Legion War boss. Goblin you. That's Ben Friedman, folks. He's your new goblin now. Okay, good draw. That well, was important. That was that, important. That was because this might induce Edgar to tap out here and then uh, Vivian can resolve and then, you know, we'll see how it looks from there. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what was the... There was a card that you hated. Oh, it was Voice of Resurgence, right. Vivian is your new Voice of Resurgence. No, because Vivian's good in some matchups. And uh -huh. I... I I understand people wanting to, you know, oh, I got a Planeswalker for this deep game. But, you know, I just am not optimistic. But this is the window. He's tapped out. He's even got an enchantment to blow up if you want to do that. We'll see if Langston drawing two uh, not very good cards a turn can keep up with Edgar <laughs> drawing one really good card a turn. Rekindling Phoenix is the reveal. I'll first research. It's a quick, quick, quick little hello yeah. there from your favorite a element. cameo. Yeah. A cameo. That was Obnixless Cruelty, by the way, that took care of uh, took care of that uh, Rekindling Phoenix. Oh, that's nice. That's a clean answer to Rekindling Phoenix. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I like that. Teferi going to put away Vivian Reed. Cinder Vines. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my other favorite card yeah. against Esper. <laughs> and now Rekindling Phoenix. Here comes a bunch of creatures. Yeah. <laughs> I've done, I've done, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not really uh, trying. Yeah, this is perfect. I'm not trying. I'm not, I swear. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to pick on Connor. This has just happened to me so many times that I can see it all unfold. 
Cinder Vines is here. Oh, that's oh, nice. All that's right. nice. That's all nice. Right. Dire Fleet Daredevil comes in. Omnixless Cruelty going to take care of there Mona. We go. There all we right. Go. We are turning it around right now if we are Connor Langston. Four Dire Fleet Daredevil is a legit way to try to prop up your matchup against S. I think that card's absurd. Really, so. really good. Hostage taker. Well, another creature. Yeah. You, you, you did. I, I just, trust me. Yeah. I just, You've been here before, huh? Where's the Basilica? Bellhot. Where's <laughs> the Lyra? Yeah. Yeah. I should have screen capped it, but it, I, I did have a game of Magic Online where my board was like five lands and two Cinder Vines, and I was being attacked by a Lyra and a Basilica Bellhot. Nice. You showed them. <laughs> Vivian Reed. Absorb is nice. Yeah. Take one from the Cinder Vines, I, I believe, and then gain two life. And now Hostage Taker is going to replay Rekindling Phoenix. Pass the turn back. Edgar was still with three mana available. Yep. All of your slow cards are bad against Esper. Well, you just don't want to go. You just don't want to go longer. Yeah. I. So. Yeah. I. You just can't go. It's destructive. It, yeah. It feel. It, it's at least there's something affirming of the about uh, having this it, having this feeling of am I really am I off by that much? Even cards like Cinder is just not good against these people. And then you know, it being the case. It being the case. Yeah. <laughs> I do think Esper Controls is going to go towards creatures so much more than they go towards spells against decks like this because there are some really big awesome cards they can play. That is a Sorcerer Spyglass. It's probably got a name to Fairy Time Raveler. Oh, well, Absorb's going to counter that, so it's not going to matter. Edgar's going to gain some life. He'll gain two this time. I don't mind Spyglass in this matchup. I think, I, you know, I, I think it's a card that's probably a little bit underplayed. A lot of the Esper decks, you know, they lean, they lean very heavily on Hero Dominaria to do the heavy lifting, especially in the post-board games where they don't have as much card advantage coming from other spots. I don't mind it, but I don't love it is how I feel about it. Oh, we're going to pick up. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, there's something. Not, this Teferi. I had, oh, no. I have not seen this before. Yeah, this Teferi being able to bounce your own stuff is a little interesting. Interesting is a word for it. That's the word I'm going to use. Now, here's bigger Teferi. They need to print, like, a seven-mana Teferi so I can say biggest Teferi. Right. You can have the whole family. Mm -hmm. A three, a five, a seven. Yeah, Teferi Time Raveler is absurd. That card's just really good. Plus this Teferi. Plus Big Brother. Plus Little Brother. And Vonad. Yep, can't even trigger the Cinder Vines. No. It's like you've seen it all before. I have seen. Uh, this is you've a, been a part of it. This is a consolidation of the, all of my nightmare matches for yep. the last three weeks. It's uh, I'm actually getting kind of, I'm getting a rash watching this. <laughs> I've seen. I've experienced all of this so much. So Cinder Vines, you want against like Simic Nexus, and that's it. Uh, basically, yeah. 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 <laughs> also, Esper just knows it's coming. Yeah, that's a lot of lands there for Connor. That's what that is. To fairy draw a card. Gonna ravel some time soon enough as well. Vonid. Vona might be legit. Yeah, this seems great. This could be legit. Seven life's a lot to pay, but And it's not like these red decks can really afford to bring in lava coil against you. That seems like a losing path. I think that's true. Well, I don't think a red deck can bring a lava coil against you, especially if they expect for you to bring and enter the God Eternals. Right, yeah, you, know, you, like you're gonna you get, can't play that you're way. You're going to get all your nonsense from that card, and you're like, okay, kill your 4-4. Four, four. It's like, all right, I guess. Hostage taker. Take care of that token. Vona it. Nope. Nothing good enough to kill. Yep. Nothing good enough to pay seven life to kill. Could kill the Cinder Vines if he wanted to. Yeah, but then Langston gets to cash it in on the Oath of Kaya, yep. you know what I mean? So... Big draw step coming. Yeah, we're all done. 
Edgar Magalhães is going to win this game and match you over Connor Langston two games to one. Esper Control going to take care of Gruel Agro, and it was a uh, maybe it was a nightmare right in front I of you.